in the last few weeks, a lot of our friends over in Italy have joined the community here. And I want to welcome you all and thank you for so many kind words. A few weren't so kind, but hey, it's to be expected. And because of all these new Italian friends, I thought it was perfectly suitable to follow up with the Cacio Pepe and all of the pasta videos that you guys have been enjoying with Carbonara. I know my Italian friends appreciate when something is done right. So I spent time getting my information from the Italians. I studied this method from this guy in Italy. His name is Luciano Monosilio, and he's dubbed the king of carbonara. And he's kind of invented this technique. Very interesting to me, it's very foolproof. It's a way of actually like cooking the eggs to a point. The method sort of consists of taking your pasta, cooking it in the pasta water, getting your egg cheese and pepper mixture, and cooking it over the pasta water like a bain-marie. So you're actually getting heat on the eggs that's gentle enough that it won't scramble them. You can pasteurize them to a point at like 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And to me, it just seems like a very interesting and user-friendly way to make this at home. Given that you can boil some pasta in a pot and you have a big enough bowl to sort of fit on it so that the pasta can boil underneath it and you can whip the egg mixture and cook it gently over the steam. And an important factor is not cooking the pasta at a boil, which you actually don't need to. You sort of only need to cook it at 90 degrees Celsius or about 195 degrees Fahrenheit. That's enough to cook pasta and to rehydrate it. And that's gonna be gentle enough to cook the eggs in. So you can get some good heat on there, make yourself feel safe, and make sure you get a good carbonara out of it. So I'm paying homage to Luciano, I think he uh, perfected this as much as one could. So we're gonna give that a shot. So the fundamental ingredients are very simple as usual, and it's a building block of cacio pepe. Cacio pepe was Parmesan cheese and pepper, or I'm sorry, pecorino cheese. This is pecorino cheese, Parmesan cheese as well, guanciale or pancetta, even though guanciale is the traditional meat used for this, black pepper, and then we're gonna make an egg sauce with it. So a carbonara is basically an egg sauce with guanciale, and it's made in the style of cacio pepe in a way. They're all kind of based off the same thing. I believe because tomatoes hadn't been introduced to the region yet, which is why all of these pastas are like oil-based or cheese base. The fat from the guanciale or the pancetta is an important factor in this. Gonna cook these down, render them out, cool down the fat to room temperature and then use that to help thicken the sauce. The problem is there's a lot of salty elements here. The meats are very salty, the guanciale, the pancetta, the pecorino is very salty. Just to clarify, pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese. And no, I don't think a sheep's milk cheese is a cow's milk cheese for those who ask. And it's very salty. Whereas Parmesan is a cow's milk cheese and it's nuttier, a little bit less salty. So I'm, you're gonna sort of use a two to one ratio of Parmesan to the more saltier pecorino to balance out that salt a little bit. And then we have black pepper. Carbonara basically means in the manner of a coal miner, and I'm pretty sure that just relates to the flecks of black pepper that are ground on top and into the pasta. I personally don't prefer guanciale in this dish, to be honest. I prefer a pancetta like this that I can kind of cut up and control the dice of, although guanciale is traditionally used. Today I'm gonna use pancetta to the dismay of all of my Italian friends, I'm sure, but there's a reason why, and it's because for you it may be more accessible in Italy, but in America it's can be found for sure, but it is just not as accessible. You sort of need to look for it. Whereas pancetta is normally found in every supermarket. So in the true style of an Italian, which is cooking locally and using what's available to you and cooking simply with all these techniques that we know, we're gonna use what's available to us in America and make this with pancetta. But if you do see guanciale, feel free to do it. Basically what you would do is just cut out all this outer layer, which is sort of just dried out a little bit, and then you would just cube it into dices. But we're gonna do that same thing with the pancetta and just make this dish that way. So the first thing I wanna do is cut this up because I wanna get this rendered out and cooked and get that fat sort of cooled down to room temperature. And then I'm gonna to start to make the rest of the dish. Now it has this little exterior. I wanna cut that off. 
I want tiny cubes of pancetta, but I don't want them too small because there's a lot of fat and it's going to shrink. And I don't want them too big because the pieces are then going to be sort of difficult to eat. So this is your time to sort of think about how big of cuts you want. I'm thinking about, I don't know what that is, about a fingernail thick. So now I just have my pancetta cubed up in a cold pan. I'm gonna slowly render this out until it releases all of its fat. Just want it crispy on the outside, nice and soft in the middle, and all of that fat nicely rendered out. One important thing when you're doing this method and you're filling up your water is make sure that your boiling water isn't filled up too high. I'm gonna put enough in so that when you use that as a bowl, it's not gonna overflow. That should be perfect. Also get your water up to temperature. Remember it's about a little under 200 degrees. You don't need to get it super boiling. And for this, you don't want to, or else it might screw up the eggs. So keep it right below the boil. So our pancetta is cooked, the fat is draining, letting that cool down to room temperature so it's just not burning hot. It's gonna help thicken that sauce at the end. We got our water, it's about 200 degrees. It's not boiling, so that's gonna be good for us. I wanna talk about pasta for one minute. I put a little bit less water than I normally do. I'm gonna put a little bit less salt in the water than I normally do because of how salty the other elements are. And I want less water so that I have more starch that concentrates in the water. And some tips from some of my friends in Italy was to think about the pasta a little bit more. And I was using some real store-bought stuff, but now I'm looking at pastas differently. When I'm making these type of pastas that rely on the starch, I'm looking for these pastas that have a little bit more texture to them, if you could see that. They're rough and you can almost see the starch on them. And you can feel them if you just run your finger across it. This pasta is going to be perfect for me. This is from Rustica Abruzzo. Rusticella d'Abruzzo Pasta Company. It's a product of Italy. This is 500 grams of pasta. So I think a little bit over a pound or around a pound. Carbonara is such a rich pasta. I can't eat the same amount as I could of uh, just a regular tomato-based pasta. So today, seeing as though I don't have a family to feed, I'm going to make this recipe with half a pound of spaghetti. This recipe will satisfy probably two or three people. If you wanna feed more, then um, just double up the recipe. So we've got our pasta, now let's grate our cheeses. Like I said, I want a little bit less Pecorino, this one, a little less of this than I do the Parmesan. So let's say about a quarter cup of Pecorino and then a half cup of Parmesan. About a half cup and probably a little less than that amount in Pecorino. So now I have my cheese. I'm gonna get the bowl I'm gonna make my pasta in with, this big bowl. And I'm gonna crack four egg yolks into it, separating the whites from the yolks. The whites are gonna go in here, the egg yolks are going in here. I'm gonna make some egg whites with this in the morning for breakfast, easy. So then I'm gonna go in with my cheese, and then black pepper. And then whisk it together. Now what we're gonna do is bring this over to the heat. We're gonna set this over the pasta water at its 
just below boiling point. We're gonna whisk this over the heat and we're just gonna wait till this to sort of come up and thicken into a little bit of a sauce. If you wanna use a thermometer, you can. You can just kinda get it to around 160 degrees. Then I'm gonna take it off, cook my pasta. When the pasta is cooked to the package instructions, so whatever al dente is on the package, you're gonna take it out and you're gonna throw it directly on into this bowl and you're gonna put this back over the pasta water. You're gonna mix that all together, let it thicken up, and once it starts to get creamy and thick, we're gonna start to add a little pasta water. We're gonna start to add a little bit of the pancetta fat to help emulsify and thicken the sauce. And then we're gonna start to add the pancetta to it. And then that's carbonara. It's that easy. This guy made a great technique. I'm super excited to share it with you. So let's just get into it. Now that's a beautiful thing. It's perfectly al dente. It's not overly salty. That method of cooking it in a bain-marie, I'm obsessed with. It feels achievable for anybody, no matter how worried you are about making this dish. It's a creamy pasta. We've got nice crisp pancetta, or you have guanciale for my friends in Italy. The black pepper is aromatic. It's just very delicious. It's not too rich. Even though we used egg yolks, it's nice and creamy and beautiful. I mean, come on, look at that. Does Italy approve? So now you know how to make Good, proper carbonara. No cream, no butter, no nothing. This is the real way. I just can't stop eating it. Go to the store, get the ingredients, make this now. Just in case you guys wondering why I put things on a cutting board is not to be cool. There's a very practical reason for doing it. You don't really have to come at me hard about the cutting board thing. It's a, it's a, a show and it's a thing in the show that's done for a reason that's more or less for behind the scenes reasons, not for you guys to worry about. And it's a style that's come to develop. So, you know, take it for what it is. If you think I'm weird, you think I'm weird. I mean, it's called Not Another Cooking Show for a reason, so. Thanks to all my patrons scrolling up on the page right now. If you wanna become a producer of the show and help contribute to the cause, I'll leave a link on the screen and down below on how you can become a patron as well. Thanks for watching. That's all I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.